okay i welcome you all uh, for this webinar on next generation classroom teaching leveraging pbl and uh, i'm glad to inf uh, introduce myself uh, r rajas bramanian assistant professor from Ka department of computer science and engineering kalaslingam academy of research and education before starting this presentation i like to acknowledge uh, uh, the regional research symposium on project based learning i have attended during the last year november i have got more insights on pbl from various pbl practitioning universities including uh, klu technological university uh, alberg university denmark and the aict director who personally had many experiences on uh, project based learning and uh, many other good practices which he uh, pronounced in the symposium on pbl i like to share those ideas including some best practices which we also follow in our career in this presentation basically i'll start with uh, the basic definition of anat kolmas uh, on pbl anat kolmas is a leading professor following pbl at alberg university i can say the birthplace of project based learning or the real uh, teaching habitat is alberg university denmark where they have a different set of teaching practices for their students uh, compared to the whole globe who have a different variety of teaching uh, according to anet project based learning is actually how a student takes a problem and finds a design to that problem to solve uh, to bring on a solution this design how the student brings out will be related to the course in which he is studying professor anet clearly states that he that particular student can provide a design to a, as a solution to the problem only when he understood the co course in that particular problem domain the student can understand only when the teacher delivers some insights on that course in a clear manner right so professor anet clearly states that when a student is able to take a problem understand the problem and provide a design to that problem then it means that the student has understood the particular course because that course helps the student to provide a solution to a real world problem right that how pbl behaves if you can have a student to follow that only when you have provided a teaching based on pbl terry belkin one of the other professor in alberg university provides a very straight forward and clarified definition for pbl the definition is very simple in earlier days or in 20th century what we follow is something called as teacher centric learning where the group of students will be there and the group of students will be focusing on the center teacher and what are the teacher or lecturer or professor says the student will believe everything it correct it is a teacher knows and he he actually uh, has his master and phd degree and he knows the subject well but what the terry belkin says is the 20th century teaching is like that how the students in a 60 or 70 set of students is focusing on the center teacher and believing what other the teacher says without any further questions but pbl the 21st century teaching is actually something different where the central point is going to be a student and the focusing point is going to be a teacher a teacher is going to focus the student instead of delivering his own teaching to the student he is going to Uh, give some suggestions to the activity what the student does instead of doing her own activity that is what the pbl lies so the student is allowed to do something called as self learning this self learning will not come to a student in the beginning stage itself now the teacher is having a very good uh, opportunity here to provide how to do self learning to a student that's what the pbl comes in the beginning that provides a student to learn himself about how to learn a particular topic in pbl we don't have any traditional classrooms yes why don't traditional classrooms in pbl is there any specific notation yes why because assume that we are having a huge set of classroom huge set of universities with number of students are had now what is the missing point is for every technology in engineering or arts or any other uh, state of the art technologies whatever the new name comes in technologies for every word we have one person called as google who can give an answer and more than google we have many online uh, certifications many online lectures nptel coursera udemy edx many uh, online courses are available with the lectures of iit nit 
and many other uh, industrial specialists and professors from foreign universities giving lectures on those topics. So for any technical technological topics you need, for everything you have online lectures to provide to other students, then why a student should invest on a particular university to study this one more time? The online lectures are providing them all the technologies freely. Then why a particular student should invest on a university to get this knowledge one more time? So we need to think something different. So we should have a uh, promise that a student will get something new which he cannot get from any online lectures or any online certifications or any IIT, NIT professors or industry or foreign collaborations. He will get something new in my classroom which he cannot get anything from outside. That's what we have to say. There is actually a saying I have read in one of the student WhatsApp status. I like to tell that here. The status says like this, the 21st century students, 21st century students are taught by the 20th century faculties who are having 19th century classrooms. The status goes like this, 21st century students are taught by the 20th century faculties who are having 19th century classrooms and syllabus. This was the WhatsApp status goes like. So this status can be relinquished or completely erased only when we give some kind of freedom to the student to do, to do something called as design thinking and self-learning, right? That is actually the primary motto of uh, PBL. Next, uh, uh, almost in, not in our university, some universities, some uh, colleges still have the practice of following the same set of experiments for the students which are actually present in the manual. The student will have some kind of replications on those uh, 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 experiments on the system or on some equipment. They will get some result and they will finish the laboratory experiments, which actually is not an usual case in PBL, wherein you will have a freedom to work on whatever you like to do in, an, in your course. It is not just replication of some courses which you have uh, in your lab manual. It is something which you need to present on your own. This is actually called as uh, PBL. If you like to do something in, in part of your course, you have full freedom for doing that. That is actually called as PBL. I have I'm, I assume that I am studying Python programming and I'm having a set of 12 courses in it. But I lay, uh, that 12 courses are relevant to the basic Python program. But I admire on working on machine learning. Yes, you are given full freedom to do it. You'll be given full support to do it, everything. That is actually called as uh, PBL. Beyond that, AACT, ISTE also provide a set of standards for the teacher who are going to provide a learning solutions to the student. Here, the ISTE says that a teacher to provide five set of standards to the student. Those five standards are student learning and creativity. It is a responsibility of a teacher to provide creativity in students. A, student, a teacher should not make a student to replicate. That is actually a worst habit for a student a teacher can develop. A teacher should make a student should, to give some creativity in, a, in his own course. If a student is able to have creativity in a particular course, the course teacher is good, doing good. Second is the assessment. We will have a brief uh, detailed sense of assessment details in uh, our presentation. So here, yeah, what PBL says is you don't have enough number of uh, uh, assessments. You have some assessment which the student actually likes and which actually the student admires to do. It should not be a kind of assessment which forces your student. It is actually a kind of assessment which encourages himself to do and present it to the teacher. Right? That kind of assessment is required for this digital learners. Third important one is professional growth and leadership. Right? Whenever we say, we say our student, our product, Telaslingam product, we say in those words. Whenever you deliver your own product to the society, that product should be a leader for his followers. You should have a professional place in his society. You should have a leadership capacity to lead forward and hold on a huge set of people coming backward. You should give, you should give your student that much big 
solutions to that and knowledge to gain uh, that professionalism fourth one is digital citizenship and responsibility yes this citizenship and responsibility we say in our program also through our projects and csps in engineering courses where a student will be doing projects which will be a solution to her, to his or her uh, community and uh, he will gain and the truth of his citizenship for the nation he will be a true citizen only when he was able to solve a particular problem in his nation when he is able to solve a particular problem he is actually in the minds of some set of people in a society he can do that only when he is able to apply his engineering knowledge in his problems if he is able to apply engineering knowledge in his problems it is the true victory of a teacher to raise his scholar and say that i have given a good product to the society from kalasanita the final one which uh, IST says is digital age work and learning right this is actually in a sense of our pivo 12 that lifelong learning a student will continue to learn again and again only when he have a sense that he need to learn right he should love to learn that love will come only when we create a kind of experience assessments teaching in the sense that student will prefer to do it again and again throughout his life this is what the five standards that ist says a student should get via the teachers whether a student will accept a pbl or why a student should accept pbl that is actually a big question mark why because we have a set of students who have practiced pbl practiced a normal range of education for more than a 12 classes you have completed first year second year now suddenly i am saying come to pbl we have a new set of assessment no surely a student will not accept that why because he is practiced in a different sense throughout his 14 years of education now suddenly we i am i am saying him to come to a different range of education surely there will be some reluctance in the student community even in faculty community to follow it why that kind of uh, thing is required what is the problem around it is it is it requires some authenticity by the sense i am saying that it should, you should have something which others don't have I, as i said during the initial slides you should have some teaching which others will not have so that a student will invest on you you should have some context which is not present in any of the social media that kind of context is required in your classroom you should have some issues in your you should have some solution to an issue which cannot be solved by anybody else in the society you should have a link to an industry which is not present outside so these things are actually the uh, things which are actually required in pb either for a faculty or a student so it is actually a, a burden or a difficult to start but once started it will be very fruitful both for a faculty and a student community engaging complex and real world problem solving right this is actually one of the mottos how can i engage you are saying that i need to solve a, pro, a societal problem um, initially what is the question from a faculty and the student uh, is if uh, i need to solve a problem a student will ask i came here to learn my engineering course before studying my engineering course or before completing my engineering education why i need to solve a problem this is what the question from the student a faculty will say i am here to deliver how the engineering concept to a student why i need to solve a problem of a society this is what the question from both faculty and the student a typical faculty and the student not all so how that social problem or a question can be answered is your engineering teaching and your engineering learning for a faculty and a student respectively is ultimately merging on a point called as community your engineering teaching should provide useful products in terms of knowledgeable students to solve the problems in the community your the students engineering learning should be at the par level to solve those problems in the community if these two powers merge the community will grow so ultimately the faculty is teaching for the community the student is also learning for the community ultimately the community is going to grow so always when you are educating or when you are learning you should focus only on the community community problems and the societal development
when you focus on that you will be in a right track to gain a right kind of knowledge if that kind of knowledge is present in the classroom then that classroom will not be replicated in any online sites or any online certifications even in iits right so how we will usually say a student as academically rigorous well what kind of academically rigorous it doesn't mean that a student is getting more than 9 cgp or 9.5 cgp it actually a prior kind of knowledge and research skills that is present in a student whether this kind of skill will be present only in a topper kind of student no or a fast learner surely no so how this kind of knowledge will be present this kind of knowledge will be inculcated only when there is a strong bond of relationship between a faculty and a student when a faculty and a student is able to communicate in such a way a student will gain something called as design thinking and self learning if that self learning capability is gained by a particular student then he will be the next scientist when why because he gained an ability to learn by himself and he he has a design thinking to to solve problems if then the question comes is if the student is able to learn by himself then what is the role of the teacher it is a very teacher has a very big role here when a student is started learning by self he will not learn only from the curriculum he will learn everything what he see if he learns everything more than a curriculum then a teacher should be a point above what the student need to know to solve all his doubts usually a teacher will be on the par rate on the curriculum but when a student starts self learning he will have many doubts and the teacher which should be in a position to answer those doubts so pbl teachers i categorize pbl teachers are more than iits or nits or industry level teachers right relevant to the students and the community you make the students to do projects based on their community not based on their interest if you want the students to go with their interest you make the student interest to focus on the community then how a student project will lead to a success we stress on the students to do projects why because only when a student is able to do a deliverable project on his course it means that his course is having an outcome for his community through his project into a student as active learners so what is that active learners this active learners doesn't mean that a student is active in a class an active learner is one who continuously studies again and again who continuously gains more knowledge from experts who continuously tries to solve a particular problem in a community surely i assure a, a single course will not make a student to solve a, a problem in a community i assure a student cannot solve but he can try he can try to provide a solution a faculty can do that he can try to touch the intellectual risk in the society if he is able to touch that intellectual risk not in his course level project in his major level project he will surely succeed to solve a community based problem okay ultimately during pbl teachers and facilitators what they will do oh, they will have an in depth investigation on the students right so what kind of investigation is required as i already said it's to now in pbl student become self learners they will not learn only what the teacher said they will learn more than what teachers tell so when they are learning more than what is present in the curriculum or syllabus the teacher should have in depth investigations the teacher should provide a wide range of distribution in 20th century learning we have narrow learning where all the students will learn on a particular thing now the condition has become different they are going to be broad learning where each set of students will be learning on their own interest to solve their own community problem i like to say uh, the word of terry belkin terry belkin in alba university has took a course on mathematics and his course on mathematics is for the computer science people there it and uh, in denmark here alba university there is no separate uh, uh, course for mathematics and computer science it is actually computer science and mathematics degree so he was actually teaching that mathematics course for the computer science people he says that you students have already solved a prerequisite in mathematics 
now you have a subject on artificial intelligence beyond this mathematics course he says you will not have any evaluations for this course throughout this trimester for them there it is a trimester wise in in year they will have three semesters so it is a trimester in the if he says in this trimester you will not have any evaluation for his course the student was very surprised why because the faculty is saying you will not have have any examinations for the course but he took all the students to south africa the nearby state he took all the students to south africa and says and showed what well, a strong set of community who are suffering more uh, of problems one of the problem took by the student of that uh, course one one set of students took a problem what problem they took is a single line problem in south africa there is a thing that the black people should not study mathematics this was actually the problem in south africa black people cannot study mathematics immediately the students of uh, denmark albag university decided to solve this problem why because they know mathematics they are pure computer science people who know artificial intelligence they are studying artificial intelligence as one of their course they actually completed mathematics so they are thinking what we can do for these people they immediately developed an ai website which is actually developing all the mathematics problems for under school education and they delivered that product as a result of their course the result of their trimester to south african black people now the black people who are denied to study mathematics in their school education is using this particular website delivered by albag university denmark students so this is actually the community problem solved by a student they are not having any assessment there is no semester sessional examination quiz uh, practical nothing is present their only motto is solving a community problem yes they are solved they they are knowledge is delivered because of their mathematical knowledge this they, they have developed a website leveraging artificial intelligence this is actually a course level project this is actually the community's problem solved right so a teacher or student can do this kind of thing and this kind of thing will really encourage a student to study that particular course especially when the particular people of black south africans come and say because of you people we got under education right so why should i do bbl still some teachers will say that uh, no bbl will be difficult why should i do right this provides opportunities for students to pursue their own knowledge they don't depend on others if they want to focus on their own interest they require pbl if they want to portray their own solutions they require assessment free education i mean assessment free education not like no assessment but i say assessment should be based on student interest a student should not forced for assessment a student should be encouraged for assessment it improves education for all students it is not a first venture last venture it improves education for all the students it is not a single assessment for a whole class it is an assessment for each student in the class the assessment differs by student by student but it is actually difficult in a university level how can i keep a different set of assessment for a different set of students but you can have at least one kind one assessment in this kind of in pbl or autonomy basis the skills learned through pbl are those desired by today's employees this particular statement is given by director aict during the regional research on pbl and he clearly says that universities which follow pbl now will be the top universities in the next 10 years also the chancellor of uh, kle technological university requested all the universities which participated in the symposium that in the next 10 years at least 10 universities from india should follow pbl so ultimately what are the benefits of pbl this offers multiple ways for student to participate and to demonstrate their knowledge why because if you keep assessment in a normal fashion many student will not understand how to solve or how to crack that assessment if you keep assessment in his own nature native place then he can easily crack that he can easily discover his talent accommodates different kind of intelligence yes of course 
the real team making the real team working will come only when you give pbl shift students away from doing only what they typically do in the classroom environment yes in classroom environment we will have a practical education a theoretical seminar a session on international talk or industry speech rather than we need to do something different in a pbl class which is which is which i leave to the innovation of a faculty to practice pbl it encourages the mastery of technological tools yes many tools will be discovered only when you have pbl in your hand why because you doesn't rely on one tool when you this is actually very visible when you ask students to do projects if we have if you ask a group of students to do projects on a particular task then you will find that each set of student will come with a different type of tools to solve the particular course at that time you should not restrict that it should not be done using a particular tool the ultimate is to solve the problem it's not a restrictive case of using a particular tool to solve the problem it prompts students to collaborate while at the same same time support self directed learning yes and i'm repeating again and again a student can do design thinking and self learning if he if he had these two things he will he will gain more and more and more knowledge and he will not suffer in community when he leaves out of the education institute it promotes internalization of concept values and mode of thoughts establishing a support your non competitive climate for students whenever you have assessment in a, in this in the in the, in the own nature of student there will be no competition in the student there will be a no case of ranking in the student it's ultimately the knowledge and the outcome what the student has it provides a means for transferring the responsibility of learning to teachers to students so now the responsibility is not with the teachers it is with students to learn but the teacher will have to suffer a lot to bring that responsibility in the student right it calls upon students to explain or defend their positions to others in the project group yes they will get their confidence to learn and to express themselves only when they got this pbl kind of activity so ultimately we have we am repeating that we need to do something for a community either to a model or to a project so how should sort of that project should be done there are six a's to say how that project should be done the first a is authenticity whatever you deliver deliver that it is new it is able to be competed in the community it should not be tackled by any industry person or any other school setting that this project is already available so your your project should be authentic you should be a solution should be useful and your product should also be authentic it should be academic rigor right so what is that academic rigor is yes, your project lead students should acquire some knowledge from various disciplines it should not be very narrow or only to either computer science or mechanical it should be a combination of computer science and mechanical combination of cs and biotech it should be a combination of multidisciplinary project so that a students will think like a scientist in doing the project applied learning right a student should be use this knowledge he should be coming and say that i have done this project leveraging which i got an opportunity to work in drdo i got i have done this project using which i got an opportunity to work in ibm i done this project because of which i was recognized by a particular person from the government this is what actually a project should be there it should be applied from one source to another but the root should be the educational institute the root cause to for him to start that project should be the teacher right and the educational institution a student should have an active exploration he should he should study everything what he got He, he should explore how can i solve this problem in various different areas all the areas which is available to solve that problem should be explored by the student and used in his project and his performance should increase based on that expert relationship he should have a huge set of links he should not rely on a particular teacher he should rely on on a huge set of links either using linkedin or facebook any we have any social media we he is able to communicate with any kind of teachers with a particular set of knowledge and he should have a huge expert relationship assessment practices this is what uh, we are going to deal more uh, detailedly his assessment should be in such a way that it should be a deliverable project 
it should be assessed in such a way that his own knowledge will be represented very clearly he should be able to execute his own ideas and talents in during the assessment so ultimately if you follow pbl we will get something called the 21st century skills what the student actually need he doesn't want to gain a 19th century knowledge from 20th century teachers he will still get 21st century skills from the 20th century faculties so he will get life and career skills he will get learning and innovation skill he will get skills for understanding information media and all technologies in the world this is actually we need to provide to the 21st century students so ultimately you know what can i do to do pbl how can i evaluate my students in our uh, kalaslingam academy of research and education we have framed many ways of evaluating our students so what is that way right whether it is going to be a theoretical sense what the student is going to do whether he is going to write and uh, write and see everything no that should not be an actual practice he doesn't want to do that he want to do something different so what we can have we usually in kalasningam we have a two sessional examination followed by an uh, assignment and end semester examination now there is a privilege for us to do it in autonomy mode that we can cancel a sessional examination yes please cancel it and you can have either a quiz where you can actually identify the in depth knowledge of a student where you can analyze the understand apply and remember skills of your student you can still make your student to go to your field analyze what is there and give you a report to you so that it can help them to do your project based on the ideas what they gained during this field visit so cancel a sessional examination take the whole set of computer science students to a ibm gain and make them sit there for a week or two have them understand about the latest technologies and submit a report on it yeah but for an agricultural student take them to your field make them identify everything practically and bring them back to the college and make them understand what they have gained from that field visit it is be why because all our project ideas are not within the school or university walls it is actually outside the wall of the university so when the student goes out he will get more insight yes finally you can have some seminars also this seminar is not on the topics contained in the syllabus it should be some topics which is actually the outcome of some other topics in your syllabus beyond the syllabus you can give some seminars to the students gain report from those seminars so that their presentation skills team work skills if communication skills can be brought out with new technological knowledge open book test yes many body are practicing practicing this they will strive to understand the what is actually in the material yeah, i give the whole book to you but even then you should use your knowledge to get an idea to solve the problem ultimately the main thing which we need to follow here is the model development or project development you make the student to, to develop something new based on the course knowledge what they have they need to understand the problem and the main thing coming here is the core design thinking if the student gained that design thinking then he is ultimate no one can touch his we can raise our collar and say this design thinking is by a product from kalasaning so i propose a 10 variety of projects for the student for you guys to practice in autonomy or a pbl type of teaching the first type of teaching is a multidisciplinary project where a student from one department can form team with student from other departments it can be a department of two or three one department act as a principal department with minimum two students right so the uh, project is actually for uh, contained of uh, four students the student which are uh, the team which is having two students from the same department will be the principal department supporting department can contribute a minimum of one student from a team a guide can be allocated as one guide or more than one guide depending upon uh, uh, the number of uh, students and uh, the project areas evaluation and reviews can be conducted in the presence of all involving departments in the venue of principal department right and this is actually the type 1 uh, multidisciplinary project yes 
the second is the course level project where we have uh, we usually do uh, we have many uh, theory with practical courses we have theory courses we have uh, integrated courses we have even a mini project process this is something a slightly improval way where a student will have study more uh, around some six courses in a semester now you can combine any three or two courses which he is studying in that semester combine those courses and deliver a project this can be either a mini or a mega project it depends so based on that you can have a com combination the, the same thing what i said as an example of terry belkin he combined mathematics and computer science to provide a product likewise you can combine two courses and provide a new project on the outcome of two courses right why because a single course will not have that much hours to print for our uh, students are based on our curriculum so we can combine two or three courses to provide a mini project as a course level project industry oriented project now several departments in kalasningam have started industry oriented uh, curriculum now this is actually an industry oriented project where the faculties who have various links in industries can get those links give the problem to the students a student can develop at least a proof of concept or complete product for the particular problem given by the industry and deliver it to industrial people as a faculty mentor so that industrial consultancy strength of career will increase this is type 3 type 4 is institutional development project this project is actually the main uh, contribution and i took this from uh, kle technological university it is this type 4 is made mandatory for kle technological university bangalore they say that a particular group of students from a department should surely contribute for a institution either using this mini project or mega project so what is the contribution yes we have more than uh, 35 years of engineering expertise we have more than 10 disciplines of engineering programs so how can our students contribute to kalasling either they can develop an uh, autonomous car moving from uh, starting of our university to a particular uh, department or it can be uh, something uh, an automated thing for our canteen or it can be something uh, uh, yes uh, attendance collector for uh, our classrooms anything or uh, uh, automatic logging system anything that can make our students to develop our institution right the type 5 is going to be a focus towards competitive culture we should make our students to publish our work either in using a just dna cst or au or any other virtual academy so these kind of activities which will come under iedc which is also available in our university then type 6 is focus towards research papers yes, this is this we are already doing we need to focus our students to publish their work either through research works either in scopus or aci and this is actually may, may based on some ieee standards and domains as per abet also right so the project coordinators as well as the course teachers can work together and provide some research oriented uh, projects also to the students type 7 is going to be field visit based project where uh, we have csp the student should go to a community gain some insight from the community use that insight to develop a solution for the problem in that community right that is actually a field visit based project this field visit based project is gaining more insight from many other institution this is actually one of the major uh, innovation from kalaslingam curriculum where uh, we have the csp for uh, two semesters now we have for one semester usually we will have it for two semesters we will go to a community find a problem in that community and make our students work on that problem and get a solution to a community so this can also be extended as a patent or a research paper or a deliverable project right then laboratory based project we should have many we have many laboratory courses and for each laboratory courses it is a required position to mandate a laboratory project which is based on the particular course as i already said if you are going to use the practice based learning or project based learning it is not just a replication of what is available in the manual and that be replicated by the student it should be something which the student should do on his own yes it is something which a student should do as a project 
that kind of freedom should be given in the laboratory with suitable equipments everything so that kind of mini project should be developed and could be verified by the head of the department i stress in head head of the department here because the laboratory can be even be developed with virtual labs the developing laboratory can be developed with automatic systems by using those mini projects so the ultimate uh, very fair will be the head of the department uh, to focus on those projects <coughs> customization of deliverables this is where many engineering universities or many engineering academies or even industries lack what is that customization is the students do for even in our university we have final year projects every year we have 30s to 50 final year projects how many projects are customized we we, we focus on research papers but still we need to make customization on our products so whatever a student they deliver we have 40 projects each year a 40 project each semester so those 40 project how many were customized how many were sold how many is being used in the society in the day to day life how many projects are adapted by the industry everything we need to have a note if my pro, if you if think that in our university in a final year a particular student is developing a major project and that major product is being used in one of the community or in one of the industry as one of the product or if student is developing a project and based on the project he developed he made an small scale industry or he have developed a startup right what iit madras is doing a student is doing a project using that project a institution is investing on him and he is developing a startup right we have iedc cell separately for this and they are actually supporting students enormously and even our university is also investing on the students who have uh, be bringing out new technologies so surely the faculties who are practicing pbl can make the students do projects and together with the faculties the student can give a report to the head so that they can give some kind of uh, support to the project to make it customizable finally we have projects to patents right why we stress as patents as a lost is this is actually an ultimate why because a project will go to patent only there is authenticity lies a project will go to patent only when there lies active learning a project will go to patent only when there is active exploration a project will go to patent only then there is a pbl inculcated on to it a student will have raised his project to patent why because he self learned self explored design time and he has a good faculty guided him right that is actually an ultimate why because he had developed an authentic project and he have delivered that project to a society and he is owning the right for this project that if anyone want to use that project he need to be paid and he need to be brought into attention so that ultimately we need to have our projects to patents right this is actually the 10 sets of uh, projects which i like to say uh, as a part of autonomy teaching right i would like to conclude in such a way right we in, in kalaslingam we have autonomy based teaching where a teacher can give a report uh, to the director iqsc through the department head and the dean so that yes, to, uh, the faculty can get autonomy for his own course it's not either uh, the course which is uh, either elective or open elective but we don't touch core courses if it is an elective course it, uh, the faculty can approach uh, the director iqsc and get permission for following this uh, autonomy activities or pbl activities i prefer you all the faculties to follow in such a way that there should be a wide difference between the courses which is dealt in autonomy mode and courses which dealt in normal mode it should not be a normal kind of assessment what a student have in both uh, normal mode and autonomy mode if a student should gain something different and he should feel something different i studied this course in autonomy and i studied this course in normal mode so i felt some sort of differences when i came to autonomy mode rather than sticking on to normal mode so he should feel some difference this difference will be gained only when you do something different than the normal practice what we have it is not just the same kind of assessment it is not just the same kind of exercises it it comes in different ways say for i'll say i'll list out some three it can be either you you, you 
say something which is out of syllabus not rele exactly relevant to the course it, it should be something more than that course second you should give some evaluation which the student actually prefer a student should come and say i was forced to attend an assessment in the normal mode but in autonomy mode i was very encouraged and i prefer to work in the particular kind of assessment when the course was dealt in autonomy third the most important point is a student should come out and say because of this course i learned this i did this because of this course i have this because of this course i was projected outside to the university through my projects and through my knowledge that's the kind of thing a student should have and come and say that because of my course i have this outside right and ultimately if you follow these things you you by yourself will have some enriched development in your teaching areas as well as in your learning areas because we are actually both teachers and learners we are continuously learning we are actually called as active learners if we give these design thinking self learning and active learning capability to our students then it will be the ultimate point where we have completed our work correctly right so this is what i need to conclude so you can have assessment in such a way that how the student prefer how the students learn and how the students should project himself to the society right yes i think i have done uh, uh, the presentation yeah, i i will leave to the uh, people who are there to ask some questions here over the presentation raja uh, nice presentation uh, can you please uh, uh, get get us through the level and different assessment methods which have been approved from our iqac so that everybody will be aware about that and how to get the approval that's the problem yes. uh would you like to show the approval uh, so that 11 uh, assessment pattern or shall i explain about that approval process sir yeah yeah uh actually uh, kindly kindly display it and uh, tell them how we are going how many we have to choose and uh, what is the procedure is to get the approval because some of the faculty are new to autonomy so they should also be knowing sure sir i i'll display it okay hello dr raja ah uh, yes sir Hello hello Raja yes sir i'm hearing you sir hello yes sir hello yeah yeah thank you sir your uh, program is very good and well taken one small doubt hello yes sir i'm hearing you sir yes sir what is your doubt sir this you said that uh, can have uh, uh, collaboration with within the department and within the university only for multidisciplinary project is it not I, you have told that yes sir hello uh, multidisciplinary projects why can't we go and uh, collaborate with other university students also uh, i would like to uh, in the disciplinary and inter university sales yes sir that is also one that way it is still good yes sir very good idea sir uh, we we stick with uh, inter uh, departmental why because we use yeah, yeah, one is... of the evaluation uh, pattern we need to uh, evaluate our students and put marks so when it is between uh, inter departmental we can put their marks easily and your point is very good more than that we can also collaborate with students from other uh, universities which is even more good we will also discuss that also sir thank you sir yeah as per the yeah, direction yeah. of uh, let's thank you thank you sir thank you as per the direction of francis sir uh, i display you the various evaluation pattern actually available with uh, uh, autonomy based teaching right we actually have totally 11 based evaluations therein one is compulsory that is at least one sessional examination apart from one sessional examination 
we should have at least uh, four four more evaluations usually the minimum evaluation required in for any courses in kalasling in is three there should be two sessional examination one assessment and one semester one in semester examination for a theoretical course for an autonomy based course instead of three internal evaluation it is mandatory that you should have five evaluations so that five evaluation should be uh, brought down to the iqc director through the hod and the dean of the department well before the course is started it is better if you have a clear plan on the questions and the type of mode in which you are going to teach also right so the evaluation is it should have an assignment and there is also a rule for having assignment also if you are choosing assignment as an evaluation it should be mandatory that at least three individual assignment should be given and the assignment should be covering only higher order groups taxonomy that is it should be either apply analyze create evaluate in that case it should be there and it should not be already available in internet or it should not be already available in the book exercises it should be something new that kind of assign assignment at least three should be given i i it should not be already available in internet it should not be already available in books it should cover only higher order taxonomies it should not any describe what is uh, uh, how this kind of question it should be something create evaluate analyze apply in those groups taxonomy the question should be there the second this quiz uh, it can be either online quiz or offline quiz and it should have a minimum of 25 questions mostly covering uh, the particular kind of topic right that you know, those questions also should not be available in internet or in any other books the student should be able to solve the, those questions in the particular time interval should be in gate or other competitive examination standard right so the third one is mini project which many of the uh, Uh, autonomy coursing uh, courses faculties are requested to do that is mini projects so mini projects can have preferably three students or maximum four students we have this liberty here why because uh, we are having a restriction in our final year project that it should not be more than three students uh, since it is being a course level projects we have extended it to one more four students the second is the project should have a well defined and achievable objectives and it should be then outside the regular working hours your mini project should not come in your working hours you can have a teaching for 45 hours right for covering your syllabus those 45 hours should not be used for this mini project evaluations or mini project teaching this mini project should come outside your teaching hours finally the evaluation should be very clear a pattern should be there and the viva was everything should be done with very very clear manner and we also i also gave some 10 different type of projects you can also use that uh, that uh, 10 different projects is also presented to vc vp as well as uh, uh, iqc director so you can also use uh, uh, you can also request from iqc director to use those 10 uh, different types of mini projects also and the fourth one is experiment based evaluation also called as laboratory practical examination So here we cannot have batches i know that many departments we will have a, a large kind of experiment which need to be done in uh, groups only but uh, this experiment based evaluation is dedicated only for individual students and uh, marks should be given based on the analysis and the final working right the fifth one is given equal priority to mini projects uh, many departments are actually uh, trying this model design or development uh, i hope from aeronautical somebody are doing so this model design can be an individual student exercise they can use either uh, autocad or decad or those kind of designing tools to do that or they can also develop a prototype for their own solution and uh, this model design will have a prerequisite for applying the same design for patent design patent also right so so the main reason for uh, and we have included this model design or development is to uh, gain a patents in the department the sixth one is a field report or case studies usually we will have a field report for community service projects but here we are having field report even for courses assume that you are going to take a course on internet of things if you are going to take a course you can just take your students to a particular place where you can find a real world problem 
which need to be solved via sensors and internet technology or, or connectivity connecting technologies you can make the students understand and how to do those uh, it, it can be a, a batch not more than two students a student should give a detailed record on doing the same seventh is the research article based evaluation i think uh, this is a rare kind of evaluation which many have not taken uh, recently we have uh, we are going to apply in uh, department of computer science and engineering uh, this kind of evaluation in the coming semester where a student will be given a research article and he will be made to pro provide an outcome for those article some kind set of students can also be uh, energized and uh, and they can also be encouraged to, to publish their work either in uh, scopus journals not in sei it is very difficult in a particular group of time it can be either submitted in a scopus journal uh, eighth is the usual many body will use that is seminars uh, a student can be given a seminar topic uh, this seminar topic should not be in the syllabus it should not that a teacher should give a syllabus topic to a student a seminar can be given on a topic outside the syllabus relevant to the course ninth is a open book test where a set of students should be given a prescribed material either developed by the course teacher itself or available by the by some technological publications then that material can be given to the students and the question should be not be directly available in the book the student should use some higher level test skills to find the answers for those solutions usually some uh, uh, design thinking or uh, problematic uh, examinations can be preferred for open book test uh, tenth is we have peer evaluation where uh, we have set for a minimum criteria as only five mark weightage for peer evaluation not more than that where a student should be separated in a group of not, not more than five students so they will be working on some uh, some kind of problems it should be an individual question for each student a student should evaluate a minimum of five other students so based on the student or peer evaluation mark should be awarded uh, 11th is in evaluation by an industry person where a student will get evaluated by an industry person either through a direct one to one questionnaire or it can be a type of quiz given by industry person or it can be a kind of project or a poc which is given by industry and the student is going to solve in a particular period of time 12th mandatory is one sessional examination and one end semester examination a student should surely have one sessional examination and one end semester examination uh, it, it can be a, a end semester examination should compulsorily have a weightage of 50 marks and i like to clarify that many body will have a doubt if it is an ic course or if it is a tp course how the evaluation goes even if you are going to have your ic course in autonomy mode it is not that your end semester examination weightage is going to change even if it is ic course 50 percentage mark will be there for end semester examination why because in ic we are have, we are using a 35 65 strategy uh, even it is IC, if you use that in autonomy mode, it will change it to 50-50 strategy. So 50 marks for internal and 50 marks for external. And compulsorily you should have one sessional examination. That one sessional examination uh, cannot be uh, replaced. Other sessional examination can be replaced either from the above 11 assessment strategies. Right? This is actually the autonomy evaluation, which is, which is actually defined completely by Karaslingam University and uh, we are working to uh, get copyright for this also right if you have any doubts on this evaluation also i will be free to uh, explain that please Uh, I leave to the participant to ask any questions regarding uh, the uh, presentation or in autonomy based evaluations. Raja, uh, what is the uh, process to get the uh, evaluation method chosen by the faculty to get approval from the IQAC office? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if a, a faculty prefer to get autonomy for a particular course, uh, he or she should get approval from the head of the department for uh, initially to to, uh, to get an approval that they need to take this course in approval, autonomy mode the faculty should explain to the head that he need to uh, choose this particular course if he is taking for the first time 
right so if the head of the department approves that he is good enough to take the particular course in autonomy mode then the head can make the faculty to develop any five evaluation patterns the evaluation pattern should be chosen from these uh, 12 patterns with sessional examination as compulsory and based on the pattern the faculty can submit that to uh, director iqac with attestation from head of the department and a mentor right a mentor should be a senior faculty who has already taken this course many times and expert in the course uh, the head of the department also can be the mentor so it should have be attested by three people head of the department uh, dean as well as uh, mentor finally it should be submitted to iqac to get the final approval for example uh, we'll display any one of the evaluation uh, pattern also sir is the evaluation pattern visible sir yes ah uh, yes it is actually the evaluation method for uh, the predictive analysis course uh, we are we are going to handle this course for the next uh, semester upcoming sem art semester of 2021 uh we have a participant we have a sessional examination we have an assignment we have a research article based evaluation experiment based evaluation and evaluation by industry person together we need to have weightage for those courses also how much weightage we are going to give right so for sessional i give a weightage of 10 and i also say that i am going to cover the sessional examination from unit 3 and unit 4 similarly i have an, have an assignment of minimum 3 assignment so i said i going to have 3 assignment giving a weightage of 8 and the 3 assignment is going to come from first unit second unit and fifth unit right so next i have going to have a research article based evaluation this research article is going to focus on uh, the course predictive analytics and i am giving a weightage of 13 and i through my uh, uh a director i gave an assurance that at least minimum of five stu student groups of a group of four will publish a paper in scopus and uh, we have an experiment based evaluation practical with a weightage of 12 uh, it is actually a, a tp course where we are going to have a very good lab manual with recent state of the art technologies in predictive analytics finally we will have an evaluation by industry person Uh, with all the units where a person from uh, ibm will come and will have an evaluation with the students we will have an end semester of compulsory 50 marks so you can and i i say that predictive analytics as per the curriculum is actually a theory with practical course so but we are having 50 50 so now you will understand even the course is either theory with practical or integrated course when you come for autonomy it will it will change to a uh, 50 50 strategy not a 65 35 strategy uh, any other doubts sir i request the faculty members uh, if anybody have uh, any good practices they have which i have missed or you can share your best practices in pbl or autonomy mode so that that can also be shared here so we can have a brainstorming session on pbl for the next 5 minutes so that uh, your best practices from uh, uh, your experience can also be shared in this uh, webinar which will make this webinar complete uh, okay i uh, i thank uh, 
and dr francis devaraj uh, head of the department uh, cse for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to deliver this uh, webinar on uh, uh, next gen classroom teaching leveraging uh, project based learning and uh, i thank uh, uh, our dean uh, deepalakshmi ma'am our uh, coordinator uh, karthiban sir as well as uh, ramalakshmi ma'am and many other attendees who have uh, came all over from any departments attending this webinar uh, and make this webinar complete uh, fruitfully thank you with all your permission i will like to close this uh, session thank you thank you thank you raja thank you for accepting in a short invitation and presenting well and uh, one more request please share the you know slides where you inspired all the 10 types of projects and so you can just share it share the google drive uh, from where we can just access that sure Very sir kind of you. sure sir I thank you everyone uh, again i i'll uh, with your permission i'll close this uh, webinar thank you Thank <laughs> you.